Hi guys, welcome back to book club. This is normally the part where I give an introduction, but our guest today really doesn't need one. I'm gonna try anyways, but whatever. Uh, this month we did Honey Baby Mine, which is a collection of deeply personal uh, conversations between two legendary and award-winning actresses who also happen to be mother and daughter, Laura Dern and Diane Ladd. Um, the fact that Laura agreed to come on here is like something I'm still wrapping my head around, so bear with me. I'm gonna be a nervous wreck. Laura's gonna be perfect and amazing, and that's like, I'm just saying it now so we all know. Um, fun fact, actually, both of them are related to Tennessee Williams, who we did A Streetcar Named Desire, if you've been a part of the book club for a while. We did Streetcar Named Desire like a couple years ago, so full circle moment. Um, and then I'm going to read a quote from the New York Times that they said about Laura and Diane, because it's always awkward when people like talk about you in front of you. So I'm going to spare her that and then I'm going to bring her on because who cares about me? Me, We have um, Academy Award winner Laura Dern coming on. Okay. This is from the New York Times. As actors, Dern and Ladd have spent decades peeling back layers to reveal their characters' fears and desires. It's when they turn that focus to each other and themsef themselves that something remarkable emerges. And this book truly is remarkable. Like, I, what it's doing and what it's going to do for relationships, I think, is so important. And um, it's so deeply personal. And what a gift to share something that personal with the world. So, without further ado, I'm bringing on Laura Dern. <laughs> This is the part also where, like, I don't know how to use Instagram Live, even though I do this truly once a month. Okay. <sighs> <sighs> I don't believe in myself. Yes! Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Turner, <laughs> here to talk about my book. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Laura Dern. Okay. <laughs> Everyone, this is Jaya. This, this is, is Jaya's best friend, friend Jaya. Jaya. <laughs> Jaya. <laughs> the only friends are people who rhyme who who with our names. So uh, that's it. That's yeah, the criteria. Uh, if you, if the name rhymes with Jaya or Jaya. As yet, clearly a different generation uh -huh. than you two. Jaya needed to just set it up for me because I got so nervous I was going to do it wrong. <laughs> I see Jaya. I had to set it up for okay, guys, too. Well, you're all set up. <laughs> Thank you, Jaya. Let me know if you need anything. <laughs> Jaya, don't go far. Oh, oh I'm right Stay here. Close. <laughs> I'm so happy to see you. Hi. I'm so happy to see you. I are you so kidding? much for doing this. It's such a privilege. I'm so, I'm so excited about your book club. I love that you guys have been reading Streetcar Named Desire. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we just had during the pandemic. Just the length of the cover. <laughs> oh, perfect. We'll get like a, we'll get the cover picture. Um, okay, thank you so much for coming on. First, before we talk about the book, do you want to tell people how far back we go? Because I think that's yes. kind of very rare and amazing. Amazingly, when Kaya was in her mother's tummy, my son Ellery was in mm -hmm. mine, and we were in a mommy group, and... We had our last brunch, I think, two <laughs> weeks before you guys were born. Like, what is this going to be like? And having mm -hmm. our kids and becoming mothers. Such an incredible support. Mm -hmm. um, and an amazing kind of fellow mom while we were going through this journey. So I have known <laughs> you since before you were here and loved you since before you were here. Yep. And now I have the privilege of knowing oh. you not only in that way, since you were a baby, also through your friendship with my son mm -hmm. and now your incredible friendship with my daughter and you are also my co-star because i'm producing a show for apple and you're incredible in it called palm royale so now we're colleagues too which is incredible i know it really like i feel like you create a family with your friends 
And I feel so lucky that I've been able to be a part of that family because it's such a close community of people and you're just so lovely and so welcoming. And yeah, now I get to like be best friends with your children and work with you and I'm surrounded Founded by by you and always and it's well really I'm like the greatest thing always ever, startled so. by you and I just um, for for listeners and friends of Kaya <laughs> um who are sharing this conversation today I have to say one of the things that moved me so much about Kaya in her deep genuine nature is when we saw my daughter's <laughs> last high school production recently and which she was like yep. literally the first person in line with her flowers so excited to be there and as a mom there's that moment where you're overwhelmed with pride and you start crying like wow look at her go this is my baby and i turned <laughs> and there was someone crying even harder than me <laughs> and that's just so beautiful but that's the kind of friend you are that's I mean, I just love your children so much and they love your family so much. And like, I never thought I was going to cry during the high school <laughs> production of Carrie, but like seeing Jaya up there and I just like see, I'm going to cry thinking about it. But you like looked back at me, I remember. And I was like, <laughs> we were like, look at our girl. <laughs> it was that, that it's, I know. It, it is, oh. you know, now working alongside you and seeing who you are as a friend and a daughter and a sister and a professional as an artist, you know, it's, um, it's gorgeous when you see people in their truth and that, and when they carry that in all aspects of their life. And by the way, you know, yeah. you, you're sharing it every day and you're sharing it with fellow readers because we're all engaging in trying to learn about how to be our most humane, our most connected, our most available to each other. So I, it's a pleasure to talk about yeah. their, this very subject, given the book mom and I did with you. Oh, I know. Oh, and okay, speaking of the book, I give everyone homework and I tell them to read the book and some people don't and I get really annoyed. But for those who haven't read the book, the story of how this book happened is kind of unbelievable and amazing. Do you want to yeah, share a little so bit about my that? My mom, who's an extraordinary influence, muse, amazing actress, Diane Ladd, uh, about three and a half years ago, um, who lives here in Southern California, unknowingly was being exposed to pesticide sprays in and around her home, um, where they weren't notifying mm -hmm. her. Her dog, had a seizure from being exposed to the pesticides and died in her arms, which was tragic and heartbreaking for her. But miraculously, this dog was the reason we discovered what was happening to my mom um, and her lungs. And the doctor said, you have, your mom has three months to live, be gentle with her. I asked what we could do to try to help her. And they said, there's no medicine, but you could expand her lung capacity if you get her walking. My mother does not like walking. Um, so we started <laughs> taking small walks together. She was on oxygen at the time. And being that she's an actress and a lover of story, I thought I would engage her mm -hmm. in, in talks, in, in talking about the things we'd never talked about from the mundane, like favorite recipes or what was the first movie you ever saw? Yeah. Questions I never thought of asking my mom yeah. to the most profound. And we never intended for it to be a book. You know, I said, let's archive this for your grandchildren and they'll always have your stories. Yeah. But it started to seem to really touch other people because as close as we may be in our various relationships, if it's with your brother, if it's with your parent, if it's with your best friend, there's so much we seem to be afraid to say. Perhaps we don't want to hurt the other person or not recognizing it as a wound in ourselves. But our hope was to just mm -hmm. share our experiences and our conversations to inspire other people to do. Yeah. Yeah, Joan Didion has this quote that says we tell ourselves stories in order to live. And I've always loved that quote. But when I started reading your book, I was like, it takes on a whole new meaning when it was literally like, getting your mom to share these stories was actually 
ultimately what helped her live. And they gave her three As months. As my and mother it would been? tell you. Um, so I have to do her because <laughs> her accent is my video. Do her. Um, Please do her. And if you guys get the audio book, you'll hear my mother's voice, which is a very memorable Mississippi accent. But she's like, yeah. they told me I had three months and it's been almost four years. Mm -hmm. And instead of dying, I made two movies, a TV show, and wrote a book with my daughter. Um, and and then I was like, Mom, how do you? I go, how do you that's feel about mom. that? And she says, Well, maybe that's why they call it practicing medicine. So my mother would also share that you never give up on life as long as you have life. And she mm -hmm. did yeah. everything with purpose in our walks and talks yeah. to alternative medicine to searching for other answers um, yeah. to advocating in the state of california yeah. against the use of pesticides so yeah. she's such a hero to me yeah. your mom is i've i've had the honor of spending time with her and she is so amazing she's a firecracker she's so strong-willed you know, in those moments where you see her not wanting to walk anymore and you trying to get her to keep walking is so kind of representative of your guys' relationships. And you talked about, like, I noticed this where I could tell you my best friend's, like, favorite movie, favorite food. But then when I think about my family, I guess the ones closest to us, we actually sometimes forget to ask those questions. So when it felt quite overwhelming and, like, you don't know how much time you have left with her, what kind of um served as a as a guiding point for, for where me to start. it was to be gentle and immediately mm -hmm. i think there's shame or guilt around hurting our loved ones so i was like i don't want to do anything to upset her so i'll just be casual and on our very yeah. first walk which we share i said you know mom i was thinking about my grandma's recipes and like you know what should we talk mm -hmm. about? Should we talk about grandma? Should we talk about her favorite food? What would you like to talk about? And she said, death. And I was like, why have I been afraid? She's going right there. But what was so what? profound in that, and we were sort of laughing about it, but mm -hmm. she said, I'm seeing your fear. And she said, Laura, you know, we all got born. That happened. And we didn't do much thought about it. And she said, and Diane's going to happen to you. You can bet your bottom boot on that. So she said, why would we spend any time worrying? Let's worry about the living. And, and she was like, I, I want to talk yeah. this through with you because I don't want you to be in fear. I want you to be in the experience of us being together. And it was kind of yeah. blinding me yeah. from actually just having the talks and having the hard talks, not just the, the fun ones yeah. which we had or the... You know, and, and as you've read, Kaya, I mean, I just want to yeah. say to like anybody in their relationships, it's messy. It's complicated. We have arguments. We don't agree. We, mm -hmm. we don't ask for forgiveness sometimes or apologize sometimes, but we hear each other. And that was yes. an extraordinary yes. gift in, in our relationship and really impacted yeah. me and my friendships and in my relationships with my kids you know, how we can say the hard things and things that I, you know, maybe yeah. you can share in this, but there's one that the chapters are various talks. You know, we did this over weeks and weeks together as mom started to get a little stronger at a time. And we, you can feel us going deeper in our, in our topics. Yeah. But in one of our conversations, yeah. I finally brought up to her, my experience of a working mom and you know like you mm -hmm. we we i'm sure have felt privileged to have moms who have been beloved for their work and understand that their work means traveling the world and being gone and you know we were provided yeah. with amazing you know family caregivers supporters of their work but it still hurts mm -hmm. And you still miss it. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to talk about that because I loved how, you know, you, you finally say yeah. to your mom, like, that was lonely. And, and your mom says, I felt guilty. And now, uniquely, you're experiencing that same feeling of guilt with your own kids. And, you know, I experienced that with my mom. And I feel like, and I wonder why we, I feel like especially as women, 
feel like we have to put on a brave face for the ones and closest to us. I, I worry that what well, my mom always says, you know, she said, look, parents lie to their kids. They want to be loved and respected. Mm -hmm. And then the kids lie to their parents because they want to be yeah. loved and respected. Yeah. And she said, I think we got honest because we thought I was dying. So we spilled the beans, but now we've said it. So we have to keep being honest. Yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. It's Not amazing now, how much we don't say. And I think I didn't want mom to feel guilty. Uh -huh. You know, my mom was of a generation mm -hmm. before me, and it's still hard, where women didn't have any opportunity to bring their kid to work, even, even mention that they were parenting while they were doing their job. And many women who were holding yeah. down two and three jobs just to provide food for their kids, you also may not have the time to stop yeah. and say, I'm sorry, I can't be here. And you're hoping if you don't yeah. mention it somehow, the yeah. kid won't realize that they miss you or that they're lonely. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of just being honest and saying, I know that this sucks. Like, I don't want to be away from you. You don't want me to be gone. But we sort of shield each other from that honesty. And I think hearing you guys talk about it in this very honest way, it made me think like, oh, yeah, that is hard being away from your parents. And why why don't on either side we we yeah sort it's of the been struggle with that. fascinating to me too which i talk about a little bit in the book but um i'll forget that anybody else is listening and just say to jaya's buddy that one of the most radical moments is that i we were taking a walk and we shared this part in the book and i mentioned to my mom how it felt when she was away and she immediately said, mm -hmm. what are you talking about? You didn't even want me there. You had such a great time. And think of the world you've traveled and all the amazing people you met. I was like, mom, yeah. you're not hearing me. Yeah. All those things are true. And it can yeah. also be true, are true that I was lonely. Yes. And that I missed you. And I was an only child. And yeah. you're an only child. You understand that. And so there was a breakthrough. Yeah. And we really talked it out. It was very beautiful. Yeah. And I felt so proud that I had like, you know, elevated my mother's understanding of, you know, the parent child relationship. Yes. I got home and Jay goes, mom, you know, we have the swim meet, you know, in two days and blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, Jaya, I'm going to work. I, I've got to fly tomorrow. She's like, what? And she looks crushed. I go, ah, you didn't even want me there. Are you kidding, Jaya? You're fine. You're going <gasps> to, and then I went, oh my God, I'm my mother. I do, and I caught myself only because of my mom's bravery to have broken through with me to then turn to Jaya and say, God, how, how does that feel? Are you upset? I know what that yeah. feels like. Yeah. And, and not try to cover or make yeah. it okay, but hear her experience. So by my mom being transparent yeah. and, and generous that way, you know, it certainly helped me listen. Um, with more of a loving ear, I hope, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, we're also so quick, I think, to remember like the one first day of school that they missed or the one concert, like school concert they couldn't be there for, you know, whatever it is, and not, you know, the times that they did make it, the times that they did come home early to see the show or whatever it is. And you talk about that with your mom as well, especially around divorce, like not necessarily wanting to remember the happy times. But that does deny you the experience of it and sort of wanting to go and explore deeper into the happier yeah. things that she had with yeah. your father. And I think, you know, there are some topics that are probably scary to bring up and that bring up a lot of pain. But another Joan Didion reference is she talks about how where she's from in the West, they always say, like, if you don't if you look the snake in the eye, it's not going to bite you. And she feels that way about pain where, you know, she wants to know where it is. Um, and I feel like you go into that with we your, really with did. Your mom I mean, first, too. as you mentioned, with divorce, I, here is my mom standing beside me through the journey of going through my own divorce, and I never thought to ask her. I, it was like I didn't want to bring up her pain, yeah. but I, I could use that camaraderie yeah. in you know this is brutal and how to how do we get through this or did yeah. how did you and dad talk it out and could it be loving amidst the pain ever you know I, trying to remember because mm -hmm. i was two when my parents divorced so even trying to remember what did she say to me um 
And so talking yeah. about it now was incredible. And, you know, as you know, but for, mm -hmm. for people who haven't read the book, my parents went through a great tragedy in their life of losing a child before me. And it was the unspoken trauma in our family. And in these talks, eventually, as we opened up more and more, my mom bravely went there as well. And I, I share it and we mm -hmm. wanted to share it primarily because my mom said to Joan Didion's point that she physically the next day suddenly felt like her lungs were better. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, she says they say that um, we hold grief in our lungs and that she was just holding this all together, feeling like she didn't want to burden me somehow, she says, with her experience or put something on me, she says, which, you know, for me, I never knew any of that. For me, it just felt like it, there was silence around it, which meant I couldn't ask, you know, that it was a taboo right. in our family. Right. Um, but, but to not know right. our parents or our siblings or our best friends' greatest pain, you know, is so sad. And yeah. if they're not ready, they will tell you. And that's what I learned. My mom, you know, yeah. I was like, wow, she's a grown up. Like she gauged for herself where she wanted to go and not. But we have to open the conversation with the people we love by going, I'm here and ready to just listen. I don't have to give advice. I don't have to project my own story. I, I want to listen. I love you. I want to yeah. hear your journey, you know? Yeah. You actually, I wrote down this quote from the book because you, you talk about it's towards the end and you say, now I know that it is not a burden to be with someone who loves you when you are suffering. It is a gift. And I think like we try to shield our loved ones from our pain and from our suffering, but you actually realize like the relationship that you've gained with your mom through, through this and like the depth of that relationship is only through sharing and being vulnerable and with each other so in that true. suffering. And it's amazing. You know, my mom's 87 and we are so close as a single mom raising an only child. We've worked together as actresses. Mm -hmm. We've made several films together. We've done a television show for HBO together. We have had all these amazing experiences and yet so much we never talked about. So, so many places we never went. Yeah. And that has been the treasure that I hope is catching when people read it that yeah you know we can all yeah. be in our availability to each other in that way yeah yeah and that's such a unique position that you guys particularly are in and that i've experienced a bit of is the experience of working with a parent which um especially in art in, a, in an artistic field and how do you think working with your mom has affected your relationship? It has given you kind of a very specific yes. dynamic that I know a little bit about. Um, so I'm curious how you sort of have felt that it has well, affected first, your guys' relationship. Um, I don't know if you've heard Kaya, um, but there's mm -hmm. this thing that people say, uh, mm -hmm. it's a term, they call it Nepo baby. Yeah. I so Kaya has it. taught that term to my mother recently, and my mother was appalled. Oh my! And my mom said that she remembers oh. growing up in a tiny town in Mississippi, and when they their family would go to the butcher, mm -hmm. the butcher would say, "Look, my son's here working next to me today." And there's this famous yes. millinery shop, beautiful hat makers in the French Quarter in New Orleans, and it's a a mother, a daughter, mm -hmm. and a granddaughter that work alongside each other in their art and mm -hmm. their craft. Mm -hmm. And they are so proud and they love working yep. together. And my mother was appalled. She'd never heard mm -hmm. that before because she only sees that in every industry, you know? And, and sound yeah. men and, and yeah. camera operators whose sons and grandsons and daughters yeah. and granddaughters go into the same line of work. It may not be yours, yeah. but if you're lucky to find an interest and a mm -hmm. gift in something that you're blessed as we have been to be born into, 
unlike yeah. our mothers who had yeah. to fight like dogs to find their way to a thing they loved, you know, and on no money yeah. and trying to figure it out um, and build a career. Like there is a blessing in seeing it yeah. and going, that fascinates me. I want to do that. Then you have the privilege of working alongside yeah. your mother and there's all the beauty in it. But now I see when I did it yeah. in my late teens, early twenties, we did it, our first film, a David Lynch film together. I remember being like, don't talk to me. Like I am my yeah. own person. Yeah. I am my own <laughs> professional. I do it differently than you. And now I can be beside her only with pride because I know my own story. She has her own story and I can just be in the joy of it. But yeah, when we're young, you also have to carve out your own path, right? You have to kind of go like this and reject it all to then find your way back to it. But it's so funny because I think all sort of mother daughters, this happens to you. But at one point you look at your mom and you go, well, what do you know? And, you know, when you do that and your mom that. actually knows a lot, it doesn't really work. You know, you want to be like, well, what do you know? And then you're like, well, I guess I actually probably should be listening to you. But to get to that place where you're just so grateful and appreciative and to like share those experiences, it is such a gift. And being raised around creativity, like both of your parents were actors. And how do you think that has affected you? I mean, on a personal level, and because I feel like, you are an artist through and through, not just in your job, but the way that you lived your life. So on a personal level, but also on a well, professional level. In both areas, and I, I, I know this from your relationship with your mom, you know, one incredible blessing of witnessing professional parent, professional female parents is we mm -hmm. are taught about self-protection in a in a very blessed way and my mother you know was scared right because she, she knows the dangers yeah. of the business and how to take care of yourself and how much projection there is um when yeah the, none of your story is even involved in someone else's experience of you so all of that noise i think we were so lucky to kind of witness and learn um, someone else's experience. And I yeah. include my dad in that too, because he, he taught me that you, you have to work hard to focus only on craft and not get caught up in so much noise and in the popularity mm -hmm. contest of it all, especially as you navigate and you guys all yeah. know in this new world of, of how we measure success in the world of social yeah. media and how we, how we navigate it, how we use it to connect and empower each other and support uh -huh. each other. Um, and also that we get to then use our experiences to talk about gender equity, to support other women in the fields we're in, in, in wisdom, in reading together, in connecting, in communication and in community. Mm -hmm. um, so that was one of the huge gifts. Uh, and you know, it was interesting because they became actors at a time that like to be a great actor, it wasn't about money. It certainly wasn't about fame. No, there was, there were hardly magazines. There was one talk show. It, there was, yep. the noise didn't even really exist. So it was, you were constantly studying and constantly working. And so I think the other gift they gave me was the, the worker in them, the pro, the, how they treated other people, yeah. the level of respect with their collaborators. And, and I know you're very much like this, like you study and you study your whole life. You don't stop learning. Yeah. Yeah. And that is something I admire so much about you is like, you've, you've basically reached what people view as the epitome of being a great actor and you still study, you still learn. And it's such a lesson to everyone around you that like, as soon as you feel comfortable or like you've got it, that's when you have to shift and keep learning something else because that is, I mean, that's kind of a death sentence for an totally. artist. I, and, think. I mean, just think about us in intimate relationships, you know, we we have one be it a friend or you know someone we're dating 
a marriage, whatever someone is walking through in intimacy with a person that they didn't know before. They think they know everything. Mm -hmm. And then you can be yeah. blindsided. You can discover depth of humanity you never knew was there. You find the poet in someone you love. You're in, you're in heartbreak that was unexpected. <laughs> and that, yeah. that doesn't mean you're gonna know anything about the next person you meet. And so if we're storytellers, no. as writers, as filmmakers, as actors, if we're craftsmen and women, you know, every day we have an yeah. opportunity. If you're waiting tables and you get to look in someone's eye and connect with them, you shift their day and they shift yours for better and for worse. And there is so much pain and yeah. there's so much trauma we desperately need each other. And so we have to keep learning every day about what we don't know about ourselves and therefore each other. And again, back to the conversation we're having, you know, we can only do it by being bold enough to speak our truth and ask the questions and be listeners, um, you know? Yeah. I just want to like cut out the last two minutes of what you just said and like play it on repeat. It's so brilliant. And, and back to this conversation you had with your mom, it's so fascinating because how close you, your relationship already was, you know, I, I don't think anyone would look at your relationship and think there was a lot of healing to be had or a lot more exploration to be done. And yet you managed to break through and go deeper and deeper and deeper. And was there something that surprised you that you learned about your mom that you didn't know before yes a lot and that's what's amazing right and and you know for anybody who is listening and therefore reading i hope it's it's funny and irreverent yeah. and not always nice or sweet this isn't like cookie cutter mother daughter like we fight we disagree and we yeah yeah we've we talked opened about We've opened up a Your couple of <laughs> arguments and now they've become full blown fights. There, there is no healing around certain things. <laughs> Some of the deepest of wounds have opened up such <laughs> compassion and closeness in each other. And then, you know, one horrible incident, which involved while I was out of town, my mother giving oh. Ellery a haircut when he was four. And the more we talk about it, the angrier I get. And the gift of it, and we've been joking about how pissed off we are. And now, even in conversations around the book, she's like, I know yeah. I'm right. I'm like, I know I'm right. But what's like incredible <laughs> that I learned in our relationship, not just about mom, is it's okay to not agree with your family and your loved ones. It's okay even to not forgive. It's not about getting to some perfunctory apology. It's about sharing your experience yeah. of events or time periods or life itself that that creates the bond yeah. of closeness, you know? Yeah. All we really want is to be heard, not even necessarily understood, just to know that our words and our experience is landing on the person that we are trying to connect to. And I think we're so quick, and I know I'm guilty of this, to go on to defense and be like, well, I didn't mean to, and this is what I was trying to do, and actually this is what happened, when instead well, all we really want is for the person to say, okay, so what I'm hearing you say is exactly. this was your experience, and it doesn't have to be mine, and both can absolutely be valid, and, uh, and to not feel like you have to come to some sort of an agreement or understanding and that your relationship can still yeah, be deep and strong said. and wonderful. And, and it's definitely been... The, the greatest gift of this whole journey for mom and I, and the most impactful part of, you know, how I'm connecting with you, how I connect with my kids, how I connect with all my friends. Um, yeah. So it, it is the gift of a lifetime in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have the tremendous privilege of knowing both of your children, who I just think are amazing human beings to no surprise, because I know you as well. But I laugh because whenever people compliment my mom on me, she always goes, she came out that way. 
And she takes absolutely zero credit for me as a person. And yet I know that I would not be who I am today had I not had her as an amazing role model and woman and friend. Um, so I wonder like how much of your children do you credit yourself with? Um, and how much do you think is just you know, sort of nature? I mean, I'll say I'm different than my mom. I have different interests in some areas than my mom. We have a different rhythm and a different manner of communicating. Yeah. But I was raised by a mom and a grandma, who we talk about a lot in the book, who are mm -hmm. complete empaths. They will do anything for a stranger on the street. And being raised yeah. with that devotion to service and mm -hmm. community completely shaped yeah. my longing to be of service ever like they they are you know and i continue to strive yeah. for that and because of them yes. i then long for that um as something i can offer my children in the way we live and consider others in our home and our life um and i have to say yeah. You know, I would, would have loved to give that to Jaya, but she's the one teaching me mm -hmm. before that ever began. As you know, she was such a badass yeah. activist as an eight-year-old. Yes. Oh, it made me so happy when they were speaking about her after the show. And it was so true what they said, which is that Jaya is the first person to have someone's back if yeah. she feels like they are being treated unfair or unjust. It's absolutely yeah. Jaya. She is the fiercest advocate for other people and for what she believes is right. And it is so inspiring. She's a little bit younger than me, but I just think she's going to change the really? world. She already but, is. And it's unbelievable. But I can't at you and, and think like you had I mean, to have or a my mom you know what i mean or it's well. like that very thing that's in my mother gets yeah, sort of passed on to the oh. child but you know certainly we're yeah. a mixture of all of it right as your mom said like you came out the way you are yeah. and you're this extraordinary bright light and yeah who she is um has been a profound impact and the same is true for all of us yeah. um and i think that yeah. you know certainly Ellery is a musician, you know, of course, there's a, an imprint from a father who's brilliant musically or, you know, Jaya loves film or, you know, but, um, but it really comes down to kindness, listening, you know, caring about each other and figuring out the discipline to, as, as I always say, because it's the best advice I ever got from my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. White, keep your eyes on your own paper. Because we have no idea what other people are going through. And what it looks like they're going through on Instagram is, is a narrative, is a presented narrative. So we must be true to ourselves. We must connect with each other thoughtfully. Everybody's going through it. Everybody's vulnerable and insecure and trying to find their way. And we all have myriad gifts. Our parents, our siblings, and our loved ones have given us or impacted us with. And like crap mm -hmm. <laughs> that we carry. You know? A lot of shit. The thing, my mom and I always... We have everyone. this saying where we just go, everyone has shit. Yeah. And it's so true. And, you know, never assume. And I think if you practice that openness and that vulnerability in your own life, it is so contagious, just like this book is so contagious. And you, what I loved is that you wrote questions at the end of the book. That's if you're going to start, basically start with these questions. And I thought that that was so fun. And I want to call my mom. And I mean, we <laughs> probably overshare with each other, but I, it, I want to call her and be like, wait, I actually don't know what your I, favorite can food I just is. Say, or... <laughs> my mom and I have been I in have tears to... because it's eminently Mother's Day and we're hearing from a lot of people. They're giving their mother yeah. the book and asking that they sit together or go on a walk on Mother's Day and start by asking the questions in the back of the book. And that, oh, that makes me so happy. 
That is such a gift. And I, I will let you go soon. But one more thing, which is like, what do you hope that people take away from this book? If I it's pray one thing? that they um, see it as a book about deepening self-discovery mm -hmm. and discovery of loved ones. Mm -hmm. It is poignant to mm -hmm. us as a mother and daughter, but it is about all yeah. relationships. Every day, it, all day long, yeah. we're presented with the opportunity to deeply listen and know each other and present available mm -hmm. all that we are in the that take it or leave it, yeah. this is who I am, flaws in all way, and be kinder to each other through it. There's enough anger and enough hurt out there to not give each other that yeah. level of respect. You know? and, um, yeah. and I just, I hope that on this Mother's Day, if one person mm -hmm could actually treat her mother with a little respect. No, no. <laughs> My daughter just walked in. Yeah. <laughs> if someone whose name exactly. Kaya, isn't Kaya. They could take me on a walk and ask <laughs> me the question. <laughs> but, but, you know, again, it has. It, Jaya and I, like you and your mom, do have such an honest, transparent relationship. But, you know, do we know for sure? I'll share one thing before we go to, like I was gonna say, do we know for sure each other's favorite food, each other's favorite color, each other's favorite flower? These silly questions that then, they seem silly yeah. and they carry you down paths to know even things I never knew about my mom's relationship to her mom when she was a teenager that, that were painful and complicated that helped me understand why she parented certain ways. You know? That's been yeah. already eye-opening, yeah. but I wanted to say, yeah, yeah to on for that is, I yeah. think, so feeling to a relationship of, oh, this is why you told me this, because this is the way that you were sort of raised and taught to exist in the world. And that is, I think, why mothers can also learn from their daughters, which is such a beautiful part of that relationship, is it and isn't so one-sided at all. We leapt, thank God from zero to a hundred, mm -hmm. from such an outdated, yeah. horrific, sexist, cultural environment to cancel culture. Now it's cancel culture. But for no. my, my mom, who was raised on children are mm -hmm. seen and not heard, girls behave a certain way, all this like really toxic language that she was given and had to shift to parent yeah. me, now she's watching a completely new yeah. iteration of how I'm parenting and what a mother-daughter relationship can be. And we've got to also, with love, yeah. bring especially the grandparents' generation along without being in judgment when no one talks yeah. about that it feels so different, you know? Absolutely. But yeah, it's like language and like welcome them and help have these conversations, you know, and help them understand, don't go you don't yeah. understand, you don't get it. Of course they don't, you know, it's a whole new world for them. And, and I, what I appreciate so much about you is you're so welcoming and you know, you're the last person to judge someone. And yet you just want to connect and, and Mom, understand. You Mom, you can't do that anymore, you know, <laughs> but, but I don't tell her why I don't even like bring her into the conversation. So I have to right. learn also before what? I judge or expect you to know the way it should be culturally like it there, there's something beautiful about inviting in past generations into the conversation of how we see the world now you know in in identity and sexuality and you know the in in art as women you know that i have a daughter when i wanted to be an actor they're like well what are you going to be I'm an actress, but I also love stories. Well, mm -hmm. pick what you're going to do. Are you going to act or are you going to write? Are you going to write or are you going to direct? You don't get to be Greta Gerwig. You know what I mean? Like Greta yeah. wasn't told yeah. you get to yeah. do all those things. She yeah. became an actress no. and kept fighting to tell her yeah. own stories. But I'll share before we leave each other, because I know everyone listening can relate to this. I said to my mom, let's ask each other these simple questions like the prompts we're talking about. And even in the conversation that's in the book, yeah. I said, 
you know, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite? And she answers. And she says, what about you, Laura? What's your favorite color? And I tell her, she goes, that's not your favorite color. I love that. You don't get to change my opinion about me. And so it's, it's been delicious yeah, yeah. just because I knew what color I liked as a six year old, you know, or that Ellery loved watching basketball yeah. games every weekend as a 14 year old. We're yeah. also as parents, yeah. we learning who you are and who you are evolving yeah. into as young men and women. And so we got to step back and witness the adult self and not just the child self that we're like holding on to, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a new story. Yeah. And so, yeah. and, and therefore we are ever evolving, yeah. right? We've been through things that change us. Completely. And, and we regret so yeah. much of what we probably yeah. did when you guys were nine or 11 or whatever. <laughs> and so may these conversations continue to heal or help us discover what, what we didn't know at the times we made certain decisions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I love where you, you know, you ask your mom, like, when does it stop? When do you stop worrying? And she goes, you don't ever stop. Which brings me, my mom is calling me right now. <laughs> you really you never, never stop being a parent yeah. and, um, and worrying about your children. And it really is so beautiful and wonderful Aww. and so endearing. Well, you're beautiful and wonderful and endearing. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just so grateful that you would share the book Aww. with all your fellow readers and friends so much to me and obviously it means so much because it's personal but again it was not intended to be a book we're only sharing it to say yeah. you know let's ask the questions yeah well I'm so honored that you came on here and I really hope that young people are reading it and taking it to their parents and asking them these questions that is what I hope um, you have been wonderful, truly. I cannot thank you enough. And I just adore Jaya, you. And Jaya, I love you. I love you. You're going to have to help you. Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. You. Hope you enjoyed the book. Love you.